valued at only 50 points. Hovering at a small four, these precise Solborg Common Squad Hunters are... The Zedian Deathwing! Zedian Deathwings have one life. A move of four spaces. A range of four, an attack of two dice, and a defense of three. Detonation Special Attack Range 1, Attack 5 A Zedian Deathwing that moved but did not attack normally may use Detonation Special Attack. Any figures adjacent to the attacking Zedian Deathwing are affected by Detonation Special Attack. Roll 5 attack dice for all affected figures. Destroy the attacking Zedian Deathwing before each figure rolls defense dice separately. So with this Zedian Deathwing, I'll be using Detonation Special Attack, range 1, attack 5. A Zedian Deathwing that moved but did not attack normally may use Detonation Special Attack. Any figures adjacent to the attacking Zedian Deathwing are affected by Detonation Special Attack. Roll 5 attack dice for all affected figures. Destroy the attacking Zedian Deathwing before each figure rolls defense dice separately. So, attacking with 5. Three. Okay. That was three dice. And uh, Songlin has a defense of three. Okay. I'll get rid of him. Yeah. Get out of the way. That's one. So two That's wounds. That's two wounds. <laughs> and for Therakis, he also is defending with three. And has another two wounds. Evasive, two. When a Zedian Deathwing rolls defense dice against an attacking figure who is non-adjacent, add two defense dice to the defending Zedian Deathwing. Sondland, and since I'm still on my uh, starting zone, I have a range of six, I'm going to uh, attack your uh, Zedian Deathwing okay. uh, with attack of four. Okay. Three. Okay. Uh, now the Zedian Deathwing is being attacked from a ranged attack, and they have an ability for that called Evasive 2, which reads, When a Zedian Deathwing rolls defense dice against an attacking figure who is not adjacent, add two defense dice to the defending Zedian Deathwing. So their normal base defense is 3, but with Evasive it becomes 5. But since that Deathwing is also on Kite, that also gets taken into account and becomes 6. So you roll a 3, right? Yeah. Three. Oh. Just, just made it. Just made it. Perfect. Flying. When counting spaces for a Zedian Deathwing's movement, ignore elevation. A Zedian Deathwing may fly over water without stopping, pass over figures without becoming engaged, and fly over obstacles such as ruins. When a Zedian Deathwing starts to fly, if it is engaged, it will take any leaving engagement attack. So my first turn is with the Zedian Death Wings. They have a they have a move of four, but they have flying. When counting spaces for a Zedian Death Wings movement, ignore elevation. The Zedian Death Wing may fly over water without stopping, pass over figures without becoming engaged, and fly over obstacles such as ruins. When the Zedian Death Wing starts to fly, if it is engaged, it will take any leaving engagement attacks. So my first one will move. Four, one, two, three. I'll take this flip. Get into Lanark, and I'll move this one four as well. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Hyper speed burst three. After moving and attacking with Zedian Deathwings, each Zedian Deathwing you activate this turn may move up to three spaces. Okay, 
So normally that would be the end of Zenny Deathwing's turn. However, they have another ability called Hyper Speed Burst 3, which states, after moving and attacking the Zedian Death Wings, each Zedian Death Wing you activate this turn may move up to three spaces. But taking that into account with their flying, this one on Wanik will stay where he is, and this one will move three spaces. So he'll go one, two, and three to get height and extra back away. Hey, what's going on, guys? Uh, thanks for joining us on this Zedian Spotlight uh, for the Zedian Death Wings. Glenn, back here with my uh, Soul Borg expert. He is the mastermind of these things. Hi, YouTube. Welcome to episode three of the Evil Robots of Heroescape show. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll be doing more stuff once we get all these metal bastards. We, out we have we have many more evil robots, and these guys are extremely evil. Glenn, would you mind reading them why they're so evil? Sure, Joe, of course. Uh, I mean, what could be so evil about a unit that's a common squad, mm -hmm. precise, 50 points? Uh -huh. I mean, four move, four range, sure. two attack. That's not bad. Three defense. That's that, easy. That, that's, pretty, that's pretty good for a 50-point unit, right? True. Then true. you take into account that, either, that they can blow themselves up. Uh-huh. Uh, as if it was a normal Deathwalker explosion, by the way. Sure. They get two extra defense dice if they're attacked from a range. Okay. Uh, which is probably going to be the most um, attacking you're going to be do against them because they can fly. Right. And if you take into account their last ability, they can move a total of seven spaces. So now you know. Did you forget the whole they move again after the attack? Oh, yeah. The most evil thing. Yeah, they can move seven spaces... Um, Half of that movement is after they attack. Um, anyone getting silver surfer flashbacks? I know I am. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why these are painted silver, by the way. It's not just because they're robots. Yeah. <laughs> so with that in mind, we have what could potentially be the most contentious unit in our customs collection. One of, certainly, the uh, Zeddy and Deathwings. I mean, what could be so controversial about these like harmless little robots? <laughs> They're tiny little sparks <laughs> that blow up and can move and attack multiple <laughs> times. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you wanna? Did you wanna attack this? No, no. It's gonna. It's gonna go back where it came from after it attacked you and got at least maybe one or two wounds off of you. Yeah. <laughs> um, did we mention they were common? Oh yeah. Did did we mention that we only have one, but God God forbid you have multiples of these? We typically play with 360 points in our army, so even having triple the amount and still be within that point limitation would be absolute hell, especially for for this gentleman because he's been on he's been on the receiving end for, of these little guys for for quite a while, and I think he could speak to just how frustrating the are they are, and it's all because of their abilities, like like you said. Um, when encountering customs in HeroScape, when looking for customs to use for our game group or just making my own, I found a lot of um, the most common ways in which figures are limited to at least make them fair in terms of point values is either they are bumped up in points to balance out their abilities and their stats, or their abilities themselves are limited. These characters, these little robots are neither. These are units that are limited, strictly speaking, in stats, and certainly not in ability, because you have... A common squad rocking four really good abilities. Four. With that's worth fifty points. Fifty points. That flies. That flies. And has a ranged attack. That's probably the biggest reason why these figures are controversial. Um, uh, is the fact that they are any any figure that flies and has range is already going to present itself as something that is going to be taken with some degree of scrutiny by someone who picks them. Yeah. Um, and you have a squad that does that that's worth 50 points. But I think enough enough sort of hampering on, on these guys being frustrating. I think that we kind of got the point. But it's how they're used, or rather how I use them, and I'm sure how other people who use these guys use them. That is yeah. just the general effect. Yeah, of please, me. please tell me. Tell me how you use them. Uh, please. Okay, so um, 
I'm sure through the demonstration and uh, by, based on how their hyperspeed burst works, um, you can kind of get a picture in your head just how effective these units can be in hit and run and just general harassment strategies, which is very much how I, how I intend to use them. It's a lot of taking advantage of their flying to get to places that have height, so you really are going to be more or less attacking with three consistently if you know positioning and know to take advantage of the landscape to and their height to access said landscape to use their to use their attack and then use their speed boost to either fly away or to get out of the retaliating figure's range, put them behind a tree or ruin, just put them in a place that is safe so then you can essentially do the same thing where you can fly them out of your little hidey hole, shoot someone, fly back in. That's one way to use them and that's again very very frustrating um, especially can, when you consider that they are a flying range squad which is always something that is worth taking issue with in any HeroScape figure. Any figure that has a range attack and flying is it's gonna raise some eyebrows and when you have a squad that can do that at 50 points it's even well that feeling of suspicion a feeling of dread m maybe for some of us might be more pronounced than others. Yeah, I mean, so so when you bring them in, <clears throat> bring them in, use them to attack, then bring them back. Um, it also keeps my army at bay because I either, if you bring them in, attack, I feel weakened. I'm not going to rush you at first yeah. because you already took control of that area, that height advantage. Yeah. So I have to then, once you go away, rush and make sure I get that before you do. But by that by that chance, if I make the wrong move, I can't get up there in time. Guess what? You're back there just in a, in a second. Right. Uh, I guess this can basically boil down to if you play with these figures and you somehow manage to get them engaged with your opponent's figures, you're doing something wrong. Um, you should never, ever put yourself in the position to have these guys have the have your opponent kind of close the gap between them. And you really shouldn't because... Yeah, movement of four isn't all that great, but you can take into consideration their flight and their ability to move an extra three spaces while taking advantage of that same flight f ability. Then you can you kind of have the lion's share of the map in terms of where you can put these guys. Um, so that's one way, just general hit and run, which I think is sort of the intention behind them. At least the intention that I got when I first saw these saw these guys for the first time, and why I was so lucky knowing that I had these models sort of in my my uh, model, my tabletop gaming collection prior to us getting back in the Heroescape. Just like with the Zedian de um, Infantry in our first video, I kind of had these little guys lying around the house, and once I figured out that someone used them for customs, it was kind of like the stars kind of aligned, because even if I didn't have them, I would probably go out and buy them because of just how effective these this, um, their stats are, and just how cheap they are, too. Um, believe it or not, they're actually... Uh, um, they, I believe they're from some sort of Star Wars fleet battle game. They're, uh, they're a starfighter that um, I just painted silver just to get that more you know, evil robot feel. Yeah, uh, what, was, what was their original color? Because I'm looking at this. They were brown, believe it or not. They were brown? They were some kind of prequel ship. I'm sure you know, uh, once we figure it out later, we could put it in the description or something if anyone's interested. But yeah. No wonder they suck. <laughs> they're from the prequel series. Yeah. Yeah, most things from the prequel series are also kind of just OP and not really kind of out of place. Yeah, no, I don't remember. Everything. Like on the card, um, I'll put that put the card up on the screen and what, to see what we're looking at here is that they don't they have them in both directions, which is really funny because I didn't make this card; someone else did. I yeah. just printed it out. Right. And so when they had these guys on the card, they have them in both directions, as if they can go. Either way, if you're looking at it from the point of view or the head, but yeah. when you painted these, I assumed um, that this section was the front, um, mostly because I I thought they sort of looked better that way. They're like basically Utgard probe droids. Another, yeah, another Star Wars reference. Or if anyone's aware of the game uh, Half Life Two, they look like the little camera robots that get in Gordon's freight. That's right. Take That's pictures right. Of them. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Glenn had had painted a little red dot on the front here, or what I was what we're calling the front, yeah, um, which is would be I guess the laser or the like, camera, or whatever, the camera. whatever it is. They're little surveillance saying, robots. Yeah, because they're saying they're saying the the eyesight here on the um, on the card is this top black piece. I guess so. So I, so that's that's their uh, eye line. Yeah, 
but um, yeah, that's how how we determine it. Where it's just like these these back these these pointy parts of a back, and these are the front. So yeah, they're always they're always pointing front this way. You know, <laughs> I think in. I think <clears> the, the ships, the ships are the other way. Yeah, the ships are the other way because I think this is supposed to be like their weapon, but I just yeah. took that to mean that's like the propulsion. Yeah, thing. that's it's like their, the booster rocket. Yeah. So I, that. I, I always just thought that was fascinating, and I, and and hopefully the, um, the 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 person that made this card like had that in mind. I'm not yeah. sure. I, I, I certainly got that impression just by looking at them because the scale is fits really well with the rest of the um, Utgard Solborg like pantheon and also just there's such a novelty within that faction too because this is the only Utgard Solborg that is legal. I feel like we should mention that despite how broken you these look. You don't say these are legal. Just so like, you're tell what yep. so you're telling me <laughs> that there was a board of. Very intelligent, smart people. People who know balance. People that understand <laughs> the game way better than we do. Way and they're like, good. you know what we need? <laughs> we need Zeddy and Death Rings. We need a 50-point squad. A flying ranged... A flying <laughs> ranged that can move around really fast and then just blow up. Yep. Well, I think the I think the blowing up is very much uh, on brand with the Deathwalkers because if you even track down even from the official game from seven thousand all the way to the customs that are used, uh, there's a lot of Utgar Solborgs, both official and custom, that like to blow themselves up. Well, they are robots. Yeah, and they're evil, and so they, they are, don't care. They do, they're Deathwalkers. <laughs> yeah, they have death. If they, if they're not either. De taking on the death, they are deathing themselves. They're becoming death. They're becoming death. De destroyer of worlds. De <laughs> destroyer of, of of Joe's army. Yes, <laughs> all of my armies. Uh, no, but uh, kidding aside, um, the uh, the uh, the flying really is kind of what makes these units so so good. I mean, you could take away maybe the remote detonation because that's very at least from how I approach these figures, very situational. Um, unless you're running a horde of these, because yeah. they are common, you can do that. Uh, in our experience, though, this is the only; these are the only death things that we have, and I feel like we like to we like to keep it that way. Because I don't think we can imagine a, any game that we would do on this channel that would be fun to watch, more or less fun to play, that has an army of these. Yeah, maybe one day, but not not anytime soon. I'm imagining it now, and <laughs> I just see flames everywhere, and like spilled Schweppes everywhere. And a flip table, and no more friends. Oh. I certainly <laughs> don't have any, any friends. No. Another strategy, though, that um, aside from the whole you know general harassment hit and run tactics, is uh, just board control. And you might be wondering how you can secure that much of the board with only two figures, because like we said, we only have one squad of these. It's kind of amazing just how big of an area denial you can create with a flying character that has four attacks, but. Um, enough about that. The glyph control is also very, very, very important. I feel like any map maker kind of worth their salt is going to put glyphs in a way that is going to maybe not completely inconvenience the player, but certainly out of the way enough to make sure that they don't get it on their first turn. But very little of the people who make those maps in such a way don't necessarily take into consideration a character that flies that can move a total of seven spaces. That's... Yeah. And when you also take into account their speed boost, well, once people start wising up to your trickery and start amassing troops where your glyphs are, then you can just attack them and then fly away, essentially taking your turn out of order and still being able to get away with it. Yeah. Very, very devious, very evil. Yeah, you just don't take see that four movement and think, oh, it's only four movement. But that, that hyper speed boost, my goodness, adding an extra three regardless of when you want to use it, if it's your first turn or your last turn, yeah. I mean, that comes in clutch. Yeah, and just the fact that the way that the detonation is worded, too, where you can move, again, it's only move of four, you can't use the hyperspeed boost after, obviously, because you're blowing yourself up. Yeah. But you can essentially turn these guys into little guided missiles if you want to. And that's certainly what I like to do once I find myself losing one. Because inevitably, that's going to happen. You're going to either get someone that has a ranged attack that evasive is that your evasive rolls are going to fail on you. Um, and they're, uh, to be fair, in the interest of you know preserving what's good and bad about these guys, their usability goes down significantly once you 
essentially half their strength when you take away one of their units. Yeah, once one dies, I'm pretty sure, I mean, not in your case, I don't know if you would ever keep it back for insurance. I think at this point, maybe you would want to just rush it in and blow it up. Yeah, they're too, they're, um, their stats at that point would be very unreliable, at least for me to comfortably use them as insurance. Yeah, movement, evasive aside, that's all great. But when you have a unit that this that is this annoying that someone is already kind of, you know, gunning towards from the beginning of the match, uh, it wouldn't be at least too smart to keep one kind of in the back and just waiting for it to be the last unit of yours left. I could certainly use, see someone using them like you would use like the rats, because I think that's their closest analog in yeah. Utgar's case is the, uh, the yeah. Death Reavers. And hiding them, you know. Can putting... you can you fly with the rats? No, you can't fly with the can rats. Can you blow up rats? No, you can't attack from range with the rats. <laughs> attack, yeah, the, bat, the rats are not throwing their teeth. That's for sure. No, uh, and yeah, and and rats, sure, they have that scatter, and you can rationalize that their defense kind of makes up for it, even though that they're only ten points cheaper than these, but. I think uh, if it really came down to it, I might take these over over the rats, especially in a very limited point game where I can't afford to take, you know, three or four squads of rats to really really get that much use out of them. I found that even having one squad of these can get a lot of a lot of results, um, and you not having to rely too much on panicking when you lose one because of that because uh, of that detonation. Yeah, I think absolutely. the person had that in mind when they said when they were developing these because uh, you know. Losing one, that's going to be, you know, that essentially renders the other one useless unless you do a suicide run and, and blow them up, in which case you can either end the game very quickly or, you know, not just put yourself in a position where you don't have to worry about them anymore. Absolutely. You blow them up. So what you're saying is, could the Zeti and Deathwings dethrone the rats? In terms of, because of how similar their roles are, just an annoying, expendable, cheap glyph grabbing screen i feel like a lot of those checkbox a lot of those boxes the zeni and death wings also do that the rats also do inherently but maybe slightly be better in some cases much better when you consider their range attack absolutely yeah the rats are 10 points cheaper but for my money i would rather i would, I would rather pay 20 points more and get two of these than have two rats um 20 points well, two. Well, having two of these would be a hundred points. Having two oh, squads right. of rats would be eighty. Right. So, I mean, they're they're certainly worth that much. That extra that Absolutely. extra payout. Um, yeah. But but what do you guys think? I mean, these units um, obviously have been a, a, an officiate of have been made official by the Heroescapers community for a while. Mm -hmm. They've been kind of out there and have been played with for a while. But um, we want to we want to hear your thoughts about about these guys. Is this the most annoying unit in Heroescape potentially? Yes. Yes, they are. I don't like them. Especially, I, they should be voted out of the uh, community. They they are horrible. I think they should. They they probably could do. Uh, they might be able to do that actually. Yeah. El elect to vote. What, is, what is it like Yu Gi Oh? And they just like so. Oh, that got, the the character's too good. It's voted out. Or like Magic. It's not the official. It's it's uh, what do they call it? Like, um, like those Magic the Gathering cards, like the Black Lotus, where they're just like, yeah, it's technically official, but like if you bring it to a tournament, people are gonna stare at you. Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. You don't. Don't play with them. No, I, I mean, they're so good that I kind of get worried about taking them because I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Um, well, let me ask you this now. Please let us know, and will you be that guy that's going to take the Zedian Death Wings? And how many squads would you take? I sympathize with you if you are that guy, by the way. No judgments here. <laughs> I can attest to how awesome they are, but also how annoying they are. Yeah. <laughs> so... Make sure you check out the other two spotlights, the Zedian Infantry and Death, uh, Death Commander right mm -hmm. here. I'll leave those links in the description. And if you want to check out these guys on the Heroescapers website, that link is in the description as well. You guys have a great night. Thank you so much for watching this video. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Happy escaping. <laughs>